Hey, Alana, when is getting charged with multiple batteries a good thing? No, no, no. What? No. What? No, we are not doing this. We are not doing the electricity jokes in the EV video. Guess what? It's too late. We're already rolling. Let's talk EVs. Electric cars are good now. Did you get the memo? Yeah, they have enough range and they're available in enough price ranges that they're a viable alternative for most commuters. Imagine never having to go to a gas station again. Today, we're rounding up the best EVs so you don't have to go charging in blind. Oh man, now I'm doing it. I gotcha. Everything we're going to talk about has been through our full testing and rating process, which you can see more about. Here, there's a link. There's a link Somewhere. Here. We put a yeah. link in. This list includes everything we've tested up until now. Our ratings are updated in real time, so if you don't see the vehicle you're looking for, make sure to check Edmunds.com to see if it's there. All right, let's actually talk about the cars. <laughs> Tesla may have captured consumers' imaginations with its futuristic and pricey vehicles, but there are affordable EVs out there that cost less than $40,000. When the Kona Electric hit the market, it immediately became our favorite new EV. Why? Well, because it's just a car, but better. You get a comfy, practical hatchback with Hyundai's easy infotainment and useful driver aids, only it's faster and more efficient than the gas models. In our testing, the Kona EV was more than a half second quicker to 60 mile per hour than its turbocharged sibling, and all that power is available right off the line, so you don't have to wait for a turbo to spool up or a transmission to wake up. We picked a Kona EV up for our long-term fleet. Really enjoy commuting in ours. I think it's the stereo. It's better than most in the class. Although that rear seat is kind of tight for big infant seats. Rear seat infant accommodations aside, we liked the Kona Electric so much, we gave it our Editor's Choice Award for the top EV of 2019. Good job, Kona. This is one electric that won't be wearing the Kona shame. When it launched, the Chevrolet Bolt leapfrogged the competition with its 238 miles of range, quick acceleration, and approachable price. Even with more competitors on the market now, the Bolt's strengths mean it's worth checking out if you're shopping for an EV. The Bolt isn't perfect. The interior is kind of plasticky, and it has a unique infotainment system that is just not as good as Chevy's norm. The lightweight and firm seats aren't very adjustable, and some people around the office felt they were a deal breaker. But your mileage, wattage, may vary. We put 30,000 miles on a Bolt as part of our long-term testing program, and its nimbleness and small size made it a solid choice for the daily commute. One thing that's awesome about the Bolt is its one-pedal driving, where lifting off the gas pedal causes the electric motors to slow the car down so you don't even have to touch the brake, and you're recapturing energy while it happens. That is a neat EV trick. For 2020, it offers 259 miles of range, although those few extra miles aren't enough to help it nab the top EV spot from Hyundai. You can find out why on our full video comparison of those two cars. The Volkswagen e-Golf, or a Golf as no one calls it, is practically a dinosaur in the EV world, having come out way back in 2015. We like the e-Golf for being, well, a Golf a likable small car with comfortable seats and Volkswagen driving dynamics that make it more pleasant than competitors from behind the wheel. For 2019, the e-Golf is up to 125 miles of range. That's well behind top competitors, but still enough to get most commuters through their day. You also get standard CarPlay and Android Auto, and a generous trunk with folding seats that give the e-Golf plenty of space for cargo. The e-Golf is the affordable EV that feels the most like a regular car, but it's not as torquey and quick as, say, the Kona, and it's definitely down on range. If you're willing to skip the bells and whistles, the e-Golf's base price is pretty affordable, but you'll have to pay extra for things like active safety features. If you're looking for a friendly and familiar way to get into electric motoring, the e-Golf is worth checking out. Nissan doesn't get enough credit for making the first successful affordable EV. In fact, the LEAF is still the top-selling EV in the world. The current generation LEAF, introduced for 2018, is quieter, more comfortable, and more rewarding to drive. And it offers plenty of range. The LEAF steering wheel doesn't telescope, making the car a little less comfortable for taller drivers. And steering feels artificial. 
but overall, the Leaf has far more strengths than weaknesses, especially if you don't need the chart-topping range offered by the Kona or the Bolt. And if you do, the Leaf Plus variant amps up the range to a competitive 226 miles. Kilowatt hours, not amps. Stay in your lane, Cher. Hey, Will, are you tired of hearing about the Edmunds long-term test fleet yet? How could anyone ever get tired of hearing about such a valuable resource for shoppers and enthusiasts alike? Good, because we've had both generations of LEAF in our garage. And the second generation really was a big improvement. Even though it was slower, I liked commuting in the LEAF a bit more than the Bolt just for the seats. Although for someone my size, it felt a bit like driving a toy car. Will is actually a lot taller than me and I am standing on a box right now. The Hyundai Ionic Electric has a low cost of entry, yet it offers all the user-friendly tech we expect from a Hyundai. It also has the most efficient electric drivetrain on the market per the EPA's miles per gallon equivalent, MPGE, which means you'll pay less to keep it charged. The Ionic isn't the best driving EV, and the rear seat is not particularly comfortable nor roomy, but it gets a shout out for offering a lot of features at an appealing price and for being so efficient. If you wanna go green and you wanna go all the way, the Ionic Electric is the current champ. Luxury electric cars aren't just about adding luxury features and performance to the EV formula, they're also about pushing boundaries. Luxury brands work hard to show off their visions of the future to tempt new and younger buyers like you. The Tesla Model S might be the oldest Tesla in production, but it is still our favorite of the company's three offerings, and it is only now seeing serious direct competition. It combines a roomy, attractive cabin with astonishing speed and outstanding range. Depending on how it's equipped, the Model S can be staggeringly quick in a straight line. The price tag, however, is equally intimidating, and compared to similarly priced internal combustion sedans, it feels a bit unpolished and lacks some of the luxury features like massaging seats. But if you're after something with a Tesla badge or serious bragging rights, the S is the best of the bunch. You know, we've owned all three Tesla models, so you can find out what they're like to live with in our long-term blog. In fact, I did the math and we've given Tesla a total of $295,700. I mean, Elon should really send us a thank you note. The BMW i3 does have the shortest range of any of the luxury electrics on this list with just 153 miles, but it does offer the option of a range extender that gets you up to 200 miles. The i3 is a unique little car. From its funky looks outside to its truly special interior, we think the i3 has one of the best interiors on the road. It's stylish and modern with novel materials, but it's still user-friendly. And the i3 drives the way you'd expect a BMW to drive. Between the rear suicide doors, big wheels with skinny tires, and that dramatic interior, the i3 really isn't like anything else on the road. Our long-term i3, yeah, we had one made a great city runabout. And if you're looking for something a little different from your EV, the i3 is a standout. The Tesla Model 3 encountered some early growing pains and the elusive $35,000 model didn't exactly live up to its advanced billing. But if you don't mind the teething issues, you'll find the Model 3 a remarkably sporty electric car with a healthy amount of space for its small footprint and an interior that pushes the definition of modern. I'm gonna be the Tesla complainer. Oh no, I'm not a big fan of having all the car's controls go through that big center touchscreen. And the display sort of made me feel like I was driving in a room with someone who was playing a video game. It's definitely more distracting to adjust vehicle settings, even simple things like adjusting your mirrors. But the Model 3 performed so well in our testing that we had to give it its due. In fact, in a recent head-to-head -head comparison test, our own Carlos Lago said that it was more fun to drive than the new BMW 3 Series. I'm not gonna argue with Carlos. The I-Pace is an impressive machine that exudes style, poise, comfort, and technical sophistication. The all-wheel drive electric SUV delivers plenty of range and good utility. But Jaguar's relative inexperience with EV technology results in surprisingly high electricity consumption and a lack of smoothness when braking at low speeds. One of the things I personally liked about the I-Pace was how it melded a sci-fi future with classic design, especially in the interior. It's one of the prettiest EVs out there, even if it isn't the most efficient. This is also one of those cars where we've seen some really strong discounts, so you might be able to find a deal on it too. 
The Tesla Model X is currently the only electric vehicle you can get with three rows of seating. It also has the most personality of any Tesla, which is a mixed bag. The Falcon Wing doors and panoramic windshield set it apart, but these features could also be viewed as gimmicks that don't really add functionality. Either way, the Model X's firm to rough ride doesn't do it any favors. Still, there is no denying that this is one quick SUV. Our long-term Model X launched to 60 miles per hour in a truly ludicrous 3.5 seconds. And you can get all the futuristic tech that make Tesla models special. But there are so many new EVs on the way. Volkswagen's got the ID coming, which is a whole new electric platform for them. And Ford says they're making both an SUV and a pickup truck. Yeah, they partnered up with Rivian, who are making a truck and a large SUV. There's also the Mercedes-Benz EQC and the Audi e-tron. We have an e-tron coming in for testing soon, so keep your eyes on our electric car rankings to see how it stacks up against the Model X. For sports car fans, Porsche just unveiled the Taycan, a pricey high-performance sedan that could give the Tesla Model S a run for its money. I mean, not like directly dollar for dollar for the money. Anyway, it's really fast, it's really cool, we think people are gonna like it. We just had a chance to check it out in person and we were pretty impressed. And there's even more. The Polestar 2 looks great, the new generation Kia Soul is getting a new EV version, and of course, Tesla has the Model Y coming, along with the new Roadster. Roadster and their own pickup truck. It feels like new electric cars and new EV technology are being announced every day. So stay tuned to Edmunds for news and reviews on the latest EVs. You can also read full reviews of every car that we talked about in this video and find great deals on electric vehicles near you. Did we mention our long-term blog? Shockingly, yes. Womp womp.